There is no business I've done which is profitable more than goats. You hear that? With proper management, a well-established goat farm can yield annual profits ranging from 30,000 USD to 50,000 USD. The income generated depends on various factors such as the number of goats, the market demand, product sales, and operational efficiency. Rise and shine, Value Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys so much. I'm really super excited to be right here in Tiruhura district with an amazing farmer. You guys, we always tell you guys whenever we go to farms and we find something really very impressive, we have to share this with you guys. We don't want to keep it as a secret. We don't want to keep everything to ourselves. I have someone right here, very successful in goat farming, and I would like him to really introduce himself. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I'm called Wamal Amir, director Amigo Farm. Uh, we are located in Chiruhura. We breed pure breeds of uh, boa and uh, crosses. Yeah. Wow, that is really so amazing. Grafton, you're most welcome. You're just joining us right now. Hi, everybody. My name is co-director Grafton. Um, again, Emil, thank you so much for having us. This man literally just came all the way from South Africa, crisscrossed the whole continent. But I have to give you credit for this. Most people, especially in Uganda, mm -hmm. when it comes to keeping time and being in business and having integrity, I took my hat off to you if I was wearing one. Thank because you. <laughs> yesterday, he got in late, told us he was gonna be here. We left that house at the crack of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> and we still met this man on the way, arrived in time, and everything we thought we were gonna find, we found it on the ground, and it was beyond our expectation. In terms of professionalism, the way this farm is set up, the scenery is fantastic. I know you're breeding pure goats here. I'm showing people see this video. And of course, they've seen your work before, mm. but this is my first time being here. I can definitely see this being an agro-tourism destination in the future. Maybe something else for them to think about. You know, you can, you guys can push <laughs> a little I, bit I'm more. already setting up that. <laughs> there you go, right? <laughs> we do not see that, yeah. And so in terms of the quality of the goats, guys, the goats are in excellent condition. Um, of course, by the time you see this, there won't be any available, so you're going to have to get in line, <laughs> wait for your turn. But at least you know the farmer, you know the farm. And as a company, we always like to feature some of the best and the brightest. True. And the work you're doing here, my brother, has been Amazing. fantastic. Thank you. Thank so. You. so, Amir, how did you really start the genetic farm, like the breeding goats? Uh, I think uh, most of uh, people have watched me, mm -hmm. have watched my eyes. Touring on uh, different TV stations. Seeds mm. of Gold, which was a great feature. Which yes. was a great um, one. I started in uh, 2020 mm -hmm. uh, after being hit by lockdown. I'm a yeah. travel consultant. I have a travel company called Africa Addict Safaris, and I'm, I'm the director. But uh, when we got the wave of uh, coronavirus, mm. I thought I could start the venture of goat farming. And fortunately, it was successful. I did it as a hobby for the beginning, but uh, it turned into business. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad to see my, my company Animal. no longer have oh my God. These people have finished me. <laughs> Very few of them. But uh, as breeders, uh, the result is next time. We keep on uh, getting more animals. Uh, I'm soon traveling to South Africa and I'm going to bring others. Wow. So everyone is uh, welcome anytime. It's a matter of contacting me and giving you an appointment when the animals will be available. Wow. And uh, I'm setting up another project called One Acre Project, where someone can keep 50 goats on one acre. I think we shall go there and yeah. we see okay. how we are setting up, though it's uh, still on... Uh, it's not yet done, at okay. least 50% is done, because mm -hmm. we have the grass already. 
and uh, we are putting up the pen. Yeah, wow. that's awesome. Yeah. Beginner farmers? Yes. That's Actually, what you're trying to target? No, what I'm um, uh, what uh, my my plan is you know here we are used to graze especially animals uh, like goats and cattle on huge chunk of land. But I want to show the world that you can uh, uh, graze goats on a very small okay. piece of land. Wow. So you can imagine 50 goats on one acre. Yeah, I would imagine based on that setup, you're setting up the different paddocks. You're going to be doing rotational grazing. Yes. And so that's actually an excellent concept because even at our farm, you know, we have a, a, a decent number of goats. We also started to set up the paddocks as well. We planted the different grasses. We have some Lab Lab, Bacaria, some of the other ones that people should incorporate into their program. But it's a fantastic idea. That I'm looking fun. forward to it mm -hmm. uh, because that's, as, as content creators slash farmers, that's the number one question we get. Mm -hmm. How many and how many goats can you raise on one acre? Yes. Whether you do free range or if you're doing zero grazing, semi-intensive, intensive, people always ask the same question. So it's gonna be really great to see how you do yours, how you execute, and hopefully at some other time in the future when we come back, because we have to come back. This farm is just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully next time we come back, the project will be fully completed. But it's gonna be great to get the beginning aspect of it and also to get the actual finished product. And hopefully you guys can definitely come out here and see it for yourself. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to it. About management of the goats. As a beginner farmer out there, or someone who is into goat farming, how have you managed with the management in your farm right here? For someone who really wants to know, yeah. Well, for the beginning I gave it time. First of all, I visited different farmers okay. to learn how they do it. and. Uh, being in love with these uh, small luminants, I was paying detailed information. On each detail, I was paying attention. So by the time I started, I always tell people, take your time before you begin, study. Make a tour study, know the outcome and the input you're going to put in before you venture into any business. Mm -hmm. So um, here it's very simple. I have, uh, you've seen my workers? Yes. Very neat. Whenever I'm coming to the farm, I don't communicate. But I find it the way it is, as you found it. It's, yes, it's very it clear. Yeah. So, uh, management, uh, then I have a camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they know that I'm For seeing them all the time <laughs> from all my phone. Time. Whether I'm in South Africa or the US or where, mm -hmm. I'm You're watching them. them. Mm -hmm. And I can call, mm -hmm. actually, call and ask, this is wrong, this is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's amazing to hear this from another farmer because we always tell people when you actually not uh, always on the ground, it's always great for you to just pop up because as the owner, you know, you spent the money, you made the sacrifices, you've earned the privilege to pop up at your property at any time like a ninja. <laughs> right? And so the fact that the place, and I can attest to this because we it's came clean. together, mm. the, the farm was in exactly this condition. The compound is clean. The staff is extremely professional. Um, typically when we've visited other farms, just picking out the goats itself has always been a painstaking challenge where the staff that works there, they don't really want to help. They don't want to participate. In fact, sometimes they'll be hiding most of the goats from you, mm. keeping everything away. But the experience was first class across the board. So for that, it shows that you actually have a process in place everybody's following it. And it's great that you actually do have the camera mm -hmm. because many of our fellow farmers, they have their farm, they have their stock, but they don't want to make the investment to protect the business. The business, yeah. So why spend all this money, your blood, sweat, and tears into getting your actual product and not spend a little bit extra mm -hmm. to protect your <laughs> initial investment? <laughs> that is true. It is the same thing we tell people, right? Many of our friends, or other farmers, beginners, intermediate farmers, what they do, they'll call us. They'll be looking for the cheapest goat. Yeah. And we always tell everybody the cheap product is often the most expensive. The expensive one. Because you're gonna, the one thing you can never get back is time. So if you can actually get a product that's already, you know, 87%, 93, somebody already put in the time, they sacrifice, and you're gonna literally start the race, you know, 
three okay. quarters of the way mm. <laughs> ahead of everybody else, if it costs you an additional $100, $120, or even, you know, an extra $150 more to save you three years of work, <laughs> it's a worthy investment. That's true. You know, value proposition is not something you should toy with. You know, again, not everybody can start at this level. You do what you can. You have your big board for your short term, medium, and of long course, long term goals. And you just have to work towards it. And so starting from 2020, it's now almost 2024. Mm -hmm. You've definitely have, I would say, gain from your initial hobby, now full-time business, <laughs> right? Well, I guess the second full-time business here. Mm -hmm. And it's even becoming more innovative <laughs> with other projects that are really coming up, you know, yeah. because of just a hobby, a simple hobby. You can yeah. just imagine what it really you know, put into all this. I also wanted to know about the profitability, like when you started this, because you started as a hobby, yes. and now you want to expand it to commercial level, do you think it's really profitable? Uh, I'm a business person. Mm -hmm. okay. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that we know. <laughs> uh, I don't think there is, I don't know whether it's because of loving, mm -hmm. or people take my animals when i still love them mm -hmm. but there is no business i've done which is profitable more than goats you hear that uh, okay <laughs> a goat can pro uh, produce uh, twice a year for example you've bought a goat at uh, let's say two million yeah and it gives you two offsprings the least in a year after five months you'll be selling that offspring at at, at least 800. how much is that and the mother is there. And the mother is right there, still giving birth. Still giving birth. By the time you're selling that, after five months, the mother is giving birth already. Mm -hmm. So calculate and see. So I can tell people that goat farming is profitable. You can wow. never go wrong. We wow. get challenges, but we can never step behind, step back. We we'll always move on. Then, in addition to that, there's something I wanted to tell people mm. about uh, those people who are looking at. Uh, uh, breeding mm -hmm. whether it's local or what don't buy goats from the market thank don't you don't buy goats from the vendors you don't know what wh why this person is selling those animals true 90 percent of people selling goats in the market the goats have problems so if you want to go into goat farming and you love it go visit farmers if you want local goats, there are farmers with uh, local goats. Go visit, to the, visit the farm. First, take a study tour and get to know about the animals, the history. Mm. Then go back and buy. I have to tell you, that is like incredible advice. And guys, that's not just with the goats. It's the same thing with cows as well. Exactly. When it comes to, you ask yourself this as a human being, as a business person. Mm. If you have the proverbial golden geese or goose at your farm, mm. Would you want to sell the one goose that's giving you pure gold every single time? Definitely. No, you're going to go for the one that's giving you bronze, sometimes silver, mm. sometimes a dud all around, right? It's the same thing as farmers. Nobody's going to wake up and sell the one goat giving you triplets, quads and say, you know what? I need some money today. Let me just take my best goat to the market and sell it at a 40% discount. Mm -hmm. You know, everything in life, you get exactly what you pay for. You pay for. And when you look for shortcuts, when you're looking for, I guess, to, to, to you know, get over on the farmers and a, tech, a, te a technique some of our brothers and sisters use when they go purchasing animals, a fair warning. Many of you will show up to these farms and you tell the actual uh, the farm owner that you're looking for meat goats. <laughs> True. But in reality, you're looking for, for breeding. breeding genetics. Exactly. <laughs> Some farmers at their farm will have meat goats. And a lot of the time, those animals are sick. Mm -hmm. They know these animals are not productive. A lot of the, some, uh, most of the time, those animals are sterile. And so when you think you're getting over on that farmer and you show up asking for meat quality because animals, you want to because you want to save some price. money, <laughs> you're going to get exactly what you pay for. So be careful. Don't be frugal. Be frugal when it comes to you, you know, finding ways to run your company efficiently. You know, these are sacrifices you can make for yourself, right? But not when it comes to the actual stock that's going to keep you in business. 
That's wow. what I had to say. That's very. Do you have anything to add on that? If I ask your next question. <laughs> no, I wanted to ask you about, of course, challenges are everywhere. We've gone to different farms. Different farmers have challenges that they face. I would really want to know, here at the farm, what challenges have you really faced so far? Starting from the beginning and where you are right now, which challenges have you really faced so far? To just give us courage as well, that we are not alone here. I want to repeat this. Mm. Before you venture into goat farming, mm. first study and get to know what you're doing. If I could tell you that I've not met a serious challenge of uh, uh, death, you may not believe it. But the first thing I studied is vaccination. Mm. Wow. Vaccination is very important. PPR, cross studio, brucellosis, FMD, and CCPP. Those are most common disease that kills our animals here. And when they come, they sweep. Mm -hmm. They don't kill one animal. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to vaccinate. If you vaccinate, you have less challenges. Mm. Then another thing is uh, sanitation, cleanliness. You have to understand that animals, goats, they like cleanliness. They have to be in a dry place they don't have, they're not supposed to sleep in their droppings mm -hmm. and you have to clean the, the house every morning. You have to train that to your workers. Yeah. And uh, another thing, quarantine is very important also. If you see a sick goat, eliminate it from others. Take blood samples, find out what the problem is. When you find out, you treat it and you come check other animals if they have the same disease. That is the technique I use. Wow, that that's is a playbook, cool. and that's so straightforward, and it's a blueprint that almost anyone can follow. But you know, our brothers, they like the shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Even there's so many times that the same message, the similar message you, you, you just shared, we've echoed. But when people purchase these animals, they look and say, oh, this goat look healthy. And they literally get it off the truck and put it directly With the into their herd. And then a few days later, Sometimes you might actually have a herd that's already fully adjusted and adapted and they've already been hardened by that environment. And then you bring another herd or another group of goats that is not accustomed to that environment. And you find that they might, that goat might come with a disease to your herd that they've never faced before. So they haven't developed that immunity. And that one goat or that extra five goat you get off the side of the road trying to be cheap may wipe you out completely. So this is very important. Vaccination is everything because when you have the vaccination schedules, that's also one of the main reasons we came here. Even before we got here, yeah. in fact, the first time Tina spoke to you about coming, making the appointment while you were still out of the country, mm. your goats were being vaccinated, Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So everything was being kept up to date. And even shared the videos with me, like when the vet was Actual on ground. proof when the vet was on the ground. <laughs> yeah. She called me when I was here. Then I said, let me take a video. <laughs> you see? Even yeah. better. So the cool thing about it, that was before you traveled, sorry. Yeah. So the cool thing about it, we always preach this to people. You know, tighten your belt. Because many of you, when you want to go out to the club, when you want to buy that extra set of bag, you want to get that new cell phone that comes out every nine months, you find a way to get the money. When it comes to your business, you have to sacrifice the same way, if not more, because the business you start today could be a hobby, could be a side, quote unquote, side, side hustle, hustle that might end up replacing your miserable <laughs> desk job in Kampala within the next couple of years. Yes, that is so true. I was very curious, and I know our viewers right there are also curious about this. Because they're looking at the goats that we have here, we have the boas. Yep. Why did you choose interest in boa, boa goats, uh, and this genetics, of course? Before uh, doing everything, anything for mm. me, I first make a research. Mm. I researched about best goats that can uh, uh, can grow well here, in because it's almost semi-arid here. Mm. Uh, and I found boas are better. And in terms of uh, of uh, growth, goa bots are the best. Wow. Around the world, even if you Google best goats in the world, mm. in growth rate, boas are the top. They're the top. Yes. So 
I'm lucky that uh, they like my place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the environment. Yes. I like your place. <laughs> <laughs> they are used and uh, they are very okay with it. So. Okay. And feeding, they're just on free range? They are on free range. Wow. Yeah. The good enough, at least there's enough land. Completely, as you can see from the background. Completely, it's free range. We don't have anything that we supplement. Yeah. No. But on the one acre project, that's when you're going to yes. do the other grasses and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. to inform other people out there that it's really very possible. You know what? Most people have really contacted us, as Griffin said, every day. I only have, I don't have enough land, I only have one acre, I only have, you know, small piece of land here. So I think something like that is going to be like an eye-opener to so many people out there before about I it. Before I chose uh, this project, it's quite costly but uh, it's worth it. Mm. Uh, someone would call me, uh, I'm called Amir but people yeah. call me Amigo. Amigo, yes. <laughs> Amigo. Uh, I like your goats but I don't have enough land. I said, uh, okay, how, how much land do you have? I have two acres. I said, that is enough for 100 goats. Like, now I can believe this. And you take time to explain, and someone would think that you're lying to them. Yeah. So I decided to come up with this uh, setup to show the people what I meant. Wow, that is amazing. And I'm looking forward to, maybe when we are opening it, I'm going to invest you guys. <laughs> we shall definitely come here. Why yeah, not? Yeah. Why not? And where do you see Amigo Farm in the next five years? It will be different. <laughs> from here. Much better. Okay. Much better. Because uh, I'm paying so much attention on what I'm doing. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm a strategic person. Mm -hmm. And I love what, what I do. When I start something, I do it thoroughly. So I'm expecting the best. Not why five years? Why don't you talk mm? about two? Okay, two years. <laughs> okay, two years. I overestimated two years in the next two years. Yes, because uh, like that project that I'm starting, I'm going mm. to put uh, 50 pure, bar, uh, pure goats. Wow. Yes. And That's two really nice. So it's, uh, it's one of the things that you're looking at. Yes, and that, that will impress people to see what I'm doing. Wow. First of all, any business, you have to love it. You have to love your, what you're going into and uh, venture into it. Many people find uh, what I can call comfort zone. Mm. Uh, I don't believe in uh, a nine to five business. Uh, I want to most people work for others. I'm sorry to say. It, that is it could true. Be, it could be rude, but... Mm -hmm. Now that is the fact. To me, it's, uh, it feels so. Yeah. Get out. Think out box. Come. Visit different farmers. See what they are doing. It's very important because uh, I'm uh, 41 and um, I'm not looking, my, uh, looking myself in Kampala in the next 15 years. I'm setting up my stuff here and I'll be retiring soon from Kampala. Hey. So, uh, if you think that why your eyes better, think what if you're sucked today? Mm. That's the first thing. Secondly, what future do you hold in case you retire? How many years are you remaining with to retire? What do you have at home? You get it? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that you have to look at and come join us. Wow. Wow. I could not have said that any better myself. So, thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Call him Amigo Farms <laughs> if you really want to reach out as well. But really appreciate you guys so, so much. I think this has been an insight for you. And we can't wait to come back here when he opens the project. When we were coming here, by the way, we were talking about the agrotourism kind of business, that you, but you've not talked about it. I think that is one of the plans that we shall definitely have as well that is coming up. But we shall definitely future it when he invites us to the farm next time. But I really appreciate you guys so, so much. If you've really watched this video up to this point and you've not even liked the video, I don't know what you guys are really waiting for. So you can follow him on Facebook, Amigo Farms. Then in case you want to follow Value Farm as well, we have Instagram, Value Farm UG, Facebook, Value Farm, TikTok is also Value Farm. Please go see behind the scenes and also see whatever we are doing at Value Farm whenever we are bringing farmers like him. Guys, you don't have to miss out all these clips that we shall definitely be sharing right there. But subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend. Till next time.
Bye. Bye. Bye.